and thank you for watching this EMTP presentation. In this video, I will demonstrate the capabilities of the time domain software EMTP and I will go through some typical application cases. But before I start, let's make sure we understand what is a time domain software. Time domain software, in opposition to phasor domain software, are also called electrical magnetic transient program. In the end, both types are in time domain, but the difference is the way the equations are solved. Let's take an example of an inductance. Here is the, the differential equation of an inductance. And here is the equation in a phasor domain software. It's used the Laplace transformation. What we can see is this equation is valid only for a given frequency. Now, in, the, in a time domain software, a EMT type software, we use the trapezoidal integration to solve this differential equation. In the case of EMTP, we will use both trapezoidal and backward Euler integration to ensure the stability of uh, the integration. Now, with this equation, we can isolate the voltage at a certain time as a function of the current and some historical term. And we can now solve the equation of the network using the nodal analysis, or in the case of EMTP, the modified augmented nodal analysis technique. In practice, that's the difference in the result we'll get between a phasor domain software and a time domain software. As you see, in the phasor domain software, you will have access to the magnitude of the phasor and the angle, whereas in the time domain software, you will see the actual waveform, uh, the actual waveform of the voltage, the current, and all the electrical quantity. And in the end, you are supposed to find the exact same waveform are the ones that are on a network, in a network. So here are the main type of application of EMTP. Let's start with the first one, the network solution. That is when we solve a load flow. Yes, EMTP is a time domain software. However, we also have very powerful load flow capabilities. The load flow can be single phase, multi-phase, balance or unbalanced. Initially, we were using the load flow in order to initialize the network. You know when you have some synchronous generator, some load, uh, on, a, on a network, then you cannot start a time domain simulation without initializing, initializing them. You have to know the angle of each machine so that when you start the time domain simulation, you have a power flow in your network that makes sense. So in the MTP, the way we do that, first you will run the load flow simulation, find all the initial condition of the network, and then you, will, you can start your time domain simulation started from the load flow. And actually, the load flow is so powerful in EMTP that now more and more users are using EMTP only for its load flow. Let's demonstrate that. If I open EMTP, I can show you this uh, very typical example. Okay, so it's a small network. As you can see here, uh, several synchronous machines. Here we have a network equivalent. It's a sub-network. If I go inside, you can see here the network equivalent, an ideal voltage source and an impedance and some transformers. For the machines, we have the model of synchronous machine plus the voltage regulator and the governor. So the big advantage of EMTP is that in the same environment, we will be able to run the load flow simulation and the time domain simulation. Let's demonstrate that. Let's say first I want to see the voltage on my network without this capacitor bank. So I can exclude the capacitor bank go in the simulation option, and find the load flow for this new condition. We can see that at the bus 1, we have a voltage of 0.96 PU, which is really li the limit. Now if I add back this capacitor bank, I can run the load, the load flow simulation again, and I can see that I have 0.99. So, we, so the size of the capacitor bank is uh, properly designed. Now what happens when we are going to switch the capacitor bank? Well, it's very easy. We can now simulate that in the time domain without changing tool. The only thing we do is now, instead of having the, cap the capacitor bank connected in steady state, we will connect it at a certain time during the simulation. For example, 20 milliseconds. 
So I run the load flow again with the capacitor bank disconnected. As we see, we are going back to 0.96 PU. And now, without any effort, I can change my simulation type from load flow to time domain. And so now I'm running the time domain simulation. As you see, it's actually very fast. In the past, time domain software were, uh, were known to be very slow uh, because of the computer mostly. But nowadays, the computers are way more powerful and also some new software like EMTP have very powerful uh, computational techniques so that now transient software are really fast to solve even big case. This one is a limited case, but as you see, it's very fast. We solve five seconds, we do five seconds of simulation in, only, in less than four seconds. So it's actually faster than real time. So let's look at the result now. In this design, I have some scope placed. For example, if I go inside this capacitor bank, here in the mask, I selected some scope, voltage scope and current scope. I can look at them using the, uh, the, the curve display tool, scope view. I go and select the branch voltage of the capacitor bank. And we can also have a look at the current. I will put that on, a, on another page. OK, so let's zoom a little bit. So initially, the capacitor bank is not initialized. Then we, so we connect the capacitor bank, and uh, we see that the capacitor bank now has a voltage. Uh, we can see the voltage on the capacitor bank as well as the current. For the current, we can see the inrush current. One thing which is very interesting is we can see the very fast variation, which are due to the propagation of the waveforms through the lines and all the, nat the extension of all the natural frequency of the network. We will come back on that point later. Another interesting thing that we can see is if we zoom a little bit on the voltage, on the crest of the voltage, we see that we have a, a slower variation of it. That is due to the uh, voltage regulator and the governor of the synchronous machine, which adapts to, which adapts to the new steady state. If I zoom a little bit more, we can see that the voltage on each phase is not the same. That's because this network is unbalanced. Here we see we have some different load on each phase and also some untransposed line. So some other, some other study we can do on the same network and again without changing uh, environment is we can do some frequency scan study. So what is a frequency scan study? The goal of that is to see the frequency response of a network. Let's say for example we want to connect a, a wind park or a power plant to this bus and this plant can inject harmonics. So we want to make sure that the harmonic injected at this point are not close to a natural frequency of the network. For that, we will have to do a frequency scan at this bus. Again, without any effort, we just have to change the simulation option. We decide the range of frequency we want to scan. We can go from 1 to 20,000. And then we have to put our small input impedance device that we find in the library option. And now we run the simulation. Let's look at the result again using scope view. So we can have a look at the impedance magnitude seen at the bus one and the impedance angle. And so now we can see all the pole and the zeros, uh, so the natural frequencies of the network. So also, when we are talking about time domain simulation, especially switching simulation, the switching time is very important. Here, arbitrarily, I decided to connect it the, the capacitor bank at 20 milliseconds. However, in a network, except if your breaker is synchronized to the network, the switching time can be any time. Maybe it will be the maximum voltage, maybe the minimum voltage. 
the switching can be unbalanced because, you know, uh, the elasticity of the material of the breaker, uh, the viscosity of it, the three pole never actually close in the same time. All that has an influence on, uh, has an influence on the voltage. And our goal as an engineer is to find the worst over voltage. So we can do the insulation coordination. So EMTP has uh, built-in capabilities to find the worst over voltage uh, for a switching case. How do we do that? It's very easy. The only thing we have to do is to parameter the statistical uh, option device. Okay, so first we have to, I forgot to do it, we have to uncheck the frequency scan. We go back to the time domain simulation. So here what uh, EMTP will do, EMTP will run hundreds of simulations automatically and will change the switching time between each simulation. In order to go faster, since we are only interested in the first cycle of the, uh, the first cycle after the capacitor banging switch, we will reduce the simulation time so uh, the, all these simulations will run faster. And we will also decrease the time step to be more precise. So we can enable the statistical option, choose the number of simulation we want to do. For the demonstration of today, let's stick to 50. However, uh, in reality, we can go up to 500 to be precise. Now I go to the breaker I want to study. In the random data, I will set Gaussian distribution for each pole. And now I can run this simulation. So now you see EMTP is running automatically the 50 simulation. You can notice that again, it's very fast. EMTP is considered as one of the fastest uh, so transient software uh, on the market. So we have 10 more simulation to do, and then we can look at the result. This time, to look at the result, we'll use mplot, which is another tool similar to scope view used to display the waveform. mplot open, and we look at the maximum and the minimum of all sim for each simulation and see the, uh, the worst case. We have to look the minimum as well because the maximum can be a negative value. And we'll display then the absolute value of them. So if, we, if you see now, for each simulation, we have the maximum and the minimum. We can zoom at the top to find the one which is the highest. And so now we know that the maximum over voltage we have was actually 300,000 volts. This is peak value. Okay, so the goal of the demonstration was to show how flexible it is to go from load flow to time domain to steady state, frequency scan, and to statistical study. All that uh, within the same environment. So then other type of study can be done. If I go back to my presentation. So I've been mostly demonstrating right now the insulation coordination, uh, for the, so uh, especially the switching but also lightning can be performed, a uh, resonance study. And now more and more, uh, everything which is around power electronics, fax, HVDC, renewable energy protection, all that is very trendy for time domain software, especially because of now the power of this uh, software allows to study those applications. So here we can see the range of application, uh, the, the range of, uh, uh, frequency that EMTP can study. It's basically go from DC to very high frequency lightning. High frequencies are very challenging to study. Why? Because if you take an example of a conductor, all the parameters change for high frequency. For example, the resistance of the conductor will increase with the frequency because of what is called the skin effect. Also, in EMTP, our model of lines and, and cables can reproduce the propagation of the waveform. What is that? The propagation of the waveform is the fact that when you have a long line and you connect one end of the line, nothing will happen instantaneously on the other end. When the, the connection on one hand will generate some waveforms that will travel to the line, 
reflect and come back and do several backs and forth like that until, re until being done. All that is reproduced in the MTP and has actually a big influence uh, for the uh, insulation coordination and the overvoltage. So what are the, benefit of the benefits of the MTP as a transcend software? Well, the first thing is the way the MTP solves the nonlinearity. In a network, a network is full of nonlinearity. For example, the saturation of the transformer, the, uh, the surge arrester, the diodes, the IGBT, all these components are nonlinear. The problem with nonlinear component is that we cannot know the impedance or the admittance of this, uh, this element without knowing the current and the voltage. And that's what we are looking at. So in the MTP, what we do to solve this problem is we do iteration within a time step. And we are one of the only one transient software doing that. We do iteration each time step to find the solution and so that we are sure 100% of uh, the result at each time step. It can make a big difference for cases where uh, non-linearities are big, like for power electronics uh, and um, uh, surge arrester, sorry. Another big characteristic of the MTP is that it's very easy to uh, script or to, um, to, to create new models in the software. Basically, all the graphical user interface is based on JavaScript, and a user can write a script to call a device, change the parameter, run, an, run several simulations, do sensitive analysis, batch studies, etc. It's also possible to create a uh, custom-made device with, it, with its own mask. Uh, for that, you can use the component from the library, or you can actually write your own code and uh, create like that what is called a DLL to build a new model. Some DLM from other software like Simulin can be imported inside the MTP. This is something that is used a lot by uh, wind park manufacturers, HVDC manufacturers, etc. Finally, the last, um, the, the last big point very, uh, which is very interesting in the MTP is the way we solve uh, the equation. We use what is called the sparse matrix technique, which is actually very important for, uh, for large grids. And that's why in the MTP we are specialized for large grid. Basically, if you don't use the sparse matrix, the, the computational time will increase as an exponent three of the number of nodes. Whereas if you use sparse matrix, it increases it increase proportionally. So it's very easy to understand that you are very limited if you don't use sparse matrix. And in the MTP, we actually have some users that model their full network in the software. We can go up to like 100,000 bus, buses, sorry. Actually, there is no limit in the size of the network you can build in the MTP. The, 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 the third point, I talked about it already, but it's the fact that we can automatically initialize the MTP from the load flow condition. That as well, when we are talking about large grid or distributed generation, it's very convenient to be able to first run the load flow, find the initial condition, and start the time domain for that. You don't have to wait uh, to reach a steady state in time domain, which can be very, uh, uh, very frustrating. So I talked previously about the very advanced model of lines and conductors. Obviously, not everyone is supposed to know how to build such a model. That's why in the MTP, we create those models for you. We have some routine where you simply input the tower configuration of the lines for the case of the line, the DC resistance, etc., and automatically generate the model. So you don't need to have any knowledge on um, on transients or in, uh, on those very advanced frequency dependent model of line. So as we see during the demonstration, within the same environment, you can go from load flow, steady state, and time domain. For the load flow and the steady state, you can display the result on the graphical user interface, look at the power through the lines, the positive, negative, zero sequence on each bus, the phase voltage, etc. For the time domain, you can look at the waveform using one of our tools, scope view or mplot. Here are a, a list, a limited list of references that uses the MTP. Uh, the list is actually way longer. Okay, so let, now let's go through some uh, very typical application. The first one is a uh, lightning transient. Uh, that's the, the very typical uh, very typical application cases, which is part of the insulation coordination. 
So in the software, we have this model of lightning, which is the Sigre model. It's uh, in the end a current source in the parallel with uh, a resistance, which and the current source has a particular shape that you can see here that respect the Sigre model. And you can come and connect this current source wherever you want on the network. Lightning studies are very local. Okay, you have to pay attention on modeling very locally uh, the network. So all the detail in the substation, the conductor, the buses, uh, all the stray capacitance of the equipment, each spine of the line, etc. For the rest, you can use a network equivalent. Then you apply your lightning and you can run some simulation. Here, for example, we are looking at the voltage at different points of the substation to compare with the BIL of the equipment. And so here we can see the voltage at the tower top. First, nothing happened. Then the lightning strikes. So we have another voltage. And those oscillations we see are the propagation of the waveform through the towers in the substation. Another thing we are looking at here is the energy through the surge arrestor. And we can make sure that the surge arrestor is modeled properly. Other type of study you can do, you can study uh, the, rate of, um, the rate of failure of the substation due to lightning, uh, the influence of the grounding resistance of the towers, etc. Another very typical type of study is what is called the transient recovery voltage. It's basically studying the ability of a breaker to disconnect a line in any case. According to the standard, the IEEE or IEC standard, two worst case scenarios has to be uh, simulated. One which is a short, uh, short line fault, single, single, ground, single phase to ground, sorry, single line to ground, and a three phase fault at the terminal. When the fault occurs, we have a, a very high current to cut, so the breaker will cut the current. As soon as the current is cut, the volt, uh, voltage will appear across the breaker. That's the, the green curve on this graph. But again, the breaker is a mechanical device, so the, the breaker doesn't open instantaneously. While it's opening, the air gap is growing, and so the length of the air gap is growing, sorry. And so the withstand voltage of the breaker, of the air gap, is growing as well. That's the red curve on this graph. And if the green curve touches the red curve, then you will have an arc or a reignition, a restrike, and the, uh, the breaker will, can get damaged. So that we want to avoid that. So in EMTP, we have a database of breakers that, uh, that have the, those uh, voltage resistance shape from the standard, and you can do those study very easily. Another type of switching study, this time when we close the breaker, very close to the one I was demonstrating with the capacitor bank, it's the line reclosing, or all kind of uh, switching for insulation coordination. Here what happened, at a certain point we disconnect the line because of an overload, and so we have some trap charge on the line. Then we will close the line, and again using these statistical capabilities, we can identify the worst overvoltage when we reclose the line with and without surge arrestor, and like that we can size the surge arrestor, or the pre-insertion resistance, or even uh, the point of uh, point on point of wave uh, switch switching. Here we are seeing we can see uh, an example on fair resonance. So what is fair resonance? Fair resonance can occur when you have uh, in a network a condition where a, a, a nonlinear inductance, typically from a transformer or a voltage transformer or a reactor actually, is in series with a capacitance. It can occur in a different situation, for example, when you, uh, when you have a, a breaker failure uh, or when you disconnect um, a, a VT uh, and you have the grading capacitance of a breaker which is in series, the VT. Uh, so all that are the conditions that you can find on the network, very typical condition. So EMTP can simulate that uh, and you can actually, if needed, you can go in a lot of detail. You can actually reproduce the hysteresis of the transformer, of course the saturation curve, and you can find like that all type of fair resonance, the periodic, the aperiodic, or completely chaotic. All that can be found using EMTP. Now we go to some uh, more, even more detailed uh, simulation. Here it's the simulation of power electronics fax. So you can, uh, you can simulate STATCOM, SVC, and you can build those models in a lot of detail. Uh, 
uh, all the control, all the IGBTs, uh, everything. Actually, some manufacturers can also give you their model. In that case, they have all their control, which is built as a DLL, and they incorporate this, uh, this control in EMTP. And so you can test the real controller in the software. Here we, you can see, uh, we artificially, we, we make a variation of the voltage at the terminal of the statcom. That's what we see on the graph here. And uh, we can see the reactive power injected uh, or absorbing, absorbed by the statcom. Another very interesting case, it's on HVDC. Now, because of, uh, of the very advanced numerical technique of the MTP, the iteration and the sparse matrix, the MTP is, the, is I, would, I can say, the most powerful software to study uh, HVDC. Basically, this one is a MMC of 21 level. We also have example of one which is 400 level. For the one of you that knows uh, uh, HVDC, no, the number of cells in, in, in the 400 level HVDC is incredible. Basically, you have uh, 400 level on the positive, uh, on the positive pole of uh, a phase, then 400 on the negative, and you have three phase. And most of the time, you are multi-terminal. So very easily, you can get to more than 10,000 uh, cells to simulate. Without the sparse matrix, that's impossible to, to simulate that in detail. But in the MTP, we can, and there is actually a, an example in the software. Of course, we have different level of, uh, of uh, model, so it can be detail or average value model, or we, are some, we have some model in between, considering what type of study has to be done. I will show later an example on HVDC. It's an example on transient stability, which is also a very typical, uh, a very typical uh, case study with the MTP. Um, so here, what do we have? We have uh, uh, some very long line with seri-compensated seri line, and then some uh, generator generation units here, and an equivalent of a network there. We can see that the control of uh, the AVR, the voltage regulator, is built, and we have a fault, and we simulate several reclosing. And then uh, we disconnect a machine and we see the new steady state, the dynamic to reach this steady state, and we can study if the, uh, if the network is stable. In that case, it's stable and we reach a new steady state. Here we can see an example on uh, how the, uh, the governor is built. So using the control library of EMTP, which is made of uh, transfer function, logic, trigonometry, etc. So you can basically build all kind of strategy, control strategy in EMTP. Now we have an example here on wind generation, which uh, now more and more EMTP is used for that. Um, the first type of study a uh, lot of people do with EMTP concerning uh, uh, wind generation is the power quality. In that case, the wind park will be uh, modeled as current source, harmonic current source, which will uh, inject all the harmonics of the wind park from the number zero to the, the order like 50, for example. There is no limit. So during the simulation, all these wind parks will inject the harmonic and we will monitor the voltage at the bus one here. And like that, we can display using scope view, we can display the harmonic for each order and compare with the standard, in that case, the IEEE 519. And in, we can see that here, we have the harmonic number 22, which is above the standard. So this case is not good. We will have to add some uh, filter somewhere. So that's a very typical uh, study with renewable. Then what uh, other user does, uh, typically the, the transmission company, uh, they will require the, uh, the manufacturer of the wind park to provide them the real controller. And then they will do all type of study. First, the low, the low voltage ride through or over, over voltage ride through requirement. So basically, by applying fault on the grid, they will check if uh, the wind parks remains connected long enough. And then they will do some uh, study on the interaction between the wind park and the grid. So sub, to, to, to be able to detect sub, sub, subsynchronous sorry, resonance or those kinds of phenomena. I will show you that later. So you see that again, you can go in a lot of detail. So that's the model of wind park. So a lot of wind turbines connected together by, by some cable with the fuse and the surge arrester. And that's the model of wind turbine. Okay, so the turbine itself is built with the control library. In here you have all the thermodynamics equation 
of the turbines, the, the, the pitch angle, etc. And the wind can be varied as an input. Then, uh, so that's a, a type 3 uh, wind turbine, the FIG. So uh, we have the asynchronous machine here, the bridge, which is built in detail again, or average value model. You have the two options. Okay, and you have the control and the protection. So it's a very detailed model, very close to the reality. So then you can uh, study, and that's also very trendy, the microgrids. You study, for example, islanding, uh, islanding detection, uh, islanding mode, uh, operation, etc. So here in that case, uh, we have a network equivalent, uh, and we disconnect the microgrid from the network equivalent, and we study the islanding detection. Then we see the variation of the frequency, the rate of a change of the frequency. So you see we have some diesel generator, uh, some, uh, we have some uh, uh, wind park, some battery, some inverter, or some PMU that are, uh, the PMU actually con uh, communicate together using the GPS time. And uh, here we have the islanding detection based on uh, the, the, the different PME on the grid. So that's a very advanced study of microgrid and smart grid. So all that can be studied in a lot of detail in EMTT as well. That's now an example on protection. Uh, so this one is overcurrent protection. Uh, so like uh, most of the traditional protection software, you can do the study in steady state. Okay, so for example, here we apply a fault. In steady state, we find the current through all, uh, uh, so through all relays. So the phase current, the negative sequence, the, positive, the, the zero sequence current, and we can see the tripping time. No big advantage of using EMTP for, uh, for steady state study like that, but it's possible in the same environment, so it's nice. But then something even more nice, you can run that in time domain and see what happened in time domain. So this time we apply the fault at 0.5 seconds, and we can see that the fast, the fast neutral protection identify the fault open the breaker, and then we reclose the breaker, and we open the fault totally. So you see that we have access to the DC component, uh, all the harmonics, and then for the protection, everything is, uh, uh, everything is modeled in detail. For the cities, you have the saturation, uh, the burdens, etc. Then for, from the relay side, you have the sampling, the anti-aliasing filter, all the DFT algorithm, um, and then all, of course, the uh, the, the algorithm, the protection algorithm, both for generic model, and we actually also have some manufacturer model. It's another example, very typical of uh, a differential relay. So we study here the energization of the transformer. So as we energize the transformer, some inrush current is created, and this inrush current actually uh, generates some differential current that can cause a trip of a relay. So here we can see the current at the secondary of the city, uh, we can clearly see the second harmonic in there, and that's the differential current generated by this event. We have two amps at the secondary, which is way enough to cause a tripping. So the goal of this study is to set up the uh, level of second harmonic inhibit or uh, fifth harmonic, etc. So here inside the relay, we can see during the simulation the level of second harmonic in green. And using scope view, we can also do a post-processing and do an FFT on this window of the uh, current. And we see the first harmonic, the second harmonic, etc. So this is inside the relay, and that's the post-processing. So you both approach are the same. And so as I, was I, was, as I mentioned before, uh, here is an example of some manufacturer's uh, algorithm. Here is the case of Schweitzer relay. So distance protection can be studied as well. So in that case, uh, we also model the communication between the relay, the different uh, uh, voltage polarization algorithm from manufacturers. Um, so it, it can be very advanced as well. So you see we have a fault in the zone one of a relay, zone two and the other. They communicate together, and they is both relay open and simultaneously at the first zero crossing of the current. One interesting thing is you can display uh, the zone uh, inside the Rx uh, graph and see the expansion of the zone when the fault occurs. Okay, so initially uh, we are here in steady state, then the fault occurs, we go inside the zone one, and you see the expansion of the zone, uh, the zone one, two, and three, and the reverse zone gets smaller in pink here. So it's very interesting. 
Another interesting thing is you can do the coordination between distance and power swing, and that's actually a, a big concern at the moment, uh, especially with the, the, renewable, uh, the renewable energy penetration. More and more studies are done on the, uh, on the coordination between power swing and distance, and actually lost our field as well. So that's something you can do with the MTP. Uh, we are publishing actually a lot of paper on that at the moment. Um, so again, you can use some algorithm from the manufacturers, for example, the one from GE, Schweitzer, Siemens. Um, so here it's the very traditional, um, uh, the, the very traditional algorithm based on two or three uh, zone, uh, in impedance zone. Okay, and so we monitor the time, the, the impedance locus, the positive sequence impedance locus remain in each zone to detect a power swing or an out of step. But we can also do the, uh, and we actually also have the capabilities to calculate the uh, continuous impedance uh, technique. So that's something that is done as well in this model. So here, same, uh, kind of the same, uh, the same thing with loss of field protection. So here you can see that we lose the field of the synchronous generator, okay, and uh, we see that we go inside the zone, so uh, the, the, the loss of field is detected. Now it's another example on open phase detection. So that's actually a big concern in the nuclear industry, uh, how to detect an open phase when you have a transformer and uh, at the secondary of the transformer, an induction machine, which can be, for example, a, a cooling, a cooling uh, machine, but which is unloaded. So a lot of studies are, done, are performed using EMTP to, uh, to find some strategy to identify, identify the open phase condition. So that's a, a very big concern for the nuclear industry. So uh, I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier, like uh, uh, when we talked about uh, wind park, it's, it's very interesting to study the interaction between the wind park controller and the traditional, uh, the traditional synchronous generator control. So that's a, an example of a full grid. Okay, the particularity of this grid is that there is no ideal voltage source. It's only a real synchronous generator. There is no slack, no infinite bus. Only synchronous generator, so basically, um, it's possible to make this uh, network crash if uh, we apply some events. So let's look at this example here. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you see it's a full network, so you have some synchronous generator. If I go in one of them, okay, you have actually two in parallel here. So you have the synchronous machine, the transformer, and inside there, the exciter, the, uh, the stabilizer, and the governor. So Everything is modeled in a lot of detail here. You can, the beauty of that is everything is in open architecture, so you can modify it if needed. Then we have some onshore wind park there. Okay, so several type, type three, type four, uh, which are connected. So again, a very detailed model with, um, with the transformer, um, the wind turbine itself, all the control here with the, the rotor control, the grid control, for the one of you that are familiar a little bit with wind park controller, you have all the different loop, uh, the proportional integral for the, the P, the, the power loop, the uh, reactive power loop, the voltage loop, and then the uh, DQ0 current loop, so the outer and inner loop, all that is in there and can be modified as needed. And so finally, the impressive part of that is we also have, oops, we also have here an offshore wind park, which is linked with an HVDC, a multi-terminal HVDC. So we have a small DC grid here with some chopper, uh, all the terminals. So that's the 500 level uh, HVDC MMC I was talking about, and the same wind park there. So if you go inside the HVDC, you can have a look how it's built. So you have the bridge here. For this type of study, we use an, uh, we use an average value model. And you have here the control which is very uh, similar actually to the one of the wind park with some uh, with different loop, outer loop, inner loop, uh, considering what mode of operation, or also you can be in the VF mode. So all that is available uh, in the mask of, uh, in the, mask of the uh, MMC. Okay, so you can see you have a control tab and you can select what kind of operation for your MMC. So it's very user-friendly, very powerful. And so you would actually be surprised for of the, the, speed, uh, the, the time it takes for EMTP to run such a simulation. Here I simulate three seconds of events. So I have a fault, I clear the fault, and I check if the network is stable. 
And if we have a look at the console, it, it took only 250 seconds to run that. It's pretty amazing for a transient software. Okay, so now let's look at the result of that to see what kind of output we can uh, see from there. So I open scope view. I actually save the template in scope view. That's something you can do. So uh, I don't lose time on, uh, on selecting the graph. Okay, so we see here the power generated by the MMC. So from the offshore wind park. Then here the power generated by some wind park. And finally the power generated by one of the synchronous generators close by the fault and the speed of it. You can make that larger. So you see that we reach in the end a good stability. Uh, and this generator has a small variation of the speed but goes back after to the uh, regular state. So in that case we don't have any trouble of uh, uh, stability neither of sub subsynchronous resonance. Of course to do subsynchronous resonance study a lot of case has to be run. So what we do in EMTP, we write some very advanced script and run sometimes more than 20,000 simulation to identify all the different parameters and make sure we have no synchronous resonance. So that's where the scripting capabilities and the speed of the software are very interesting. 